Hello, YouTube. I've noticed a lot of you in the comments asking very often how I've gotten to aim as well as I do. So today, I'm going to show you all of the things that I've done, uh, a practice regimen, some settings, and tactics in combat that all add up to what I'm able to do. So one of the first things that I cannot recommend enough Especially if you're not using a gun stock, which, surprise, surprise, I do not use a physical gun stock. In the settings, we can head over to this first option, gameplay, and right here you're gonna see virtual gun stock. Turn it on. Now, when you first turn it on and you grab a gun, you're gonna feel, especially if you've been playing for a long time without it on, it's going to feel very weird. And you're gonna go, ugh, I don't wanna use this. I'm gonna turn it off right away. Stop, let me explain what it's doing so you better understand why the movement is the way it is. First off, the virtual gun stock imitates anchor points, okay? From your shoulder to your right hand, okay? So if you do any sort of aiming, let me turn off virtual stock to show you. If you're ever aiming like this, like, oh, there's, there's a guy over there, I'm gonna, twist my, like you don't, you don't want the back end of the gun being anywhere other than in your armpit, okay? In your shoulder. That's how you shoot guns IRL. That's how it works. You're never gonna see anybody using a rifle and tilting it like this to fire around with no support on the back end, okay? So without the gun stock on, it lets you just kind of free tilt. I'm just doing circles here, and this right arm just kind of does whatever you want it to do. But with the virtual stock on, I'll do those same spinning. I'm doing the same motion. You can see it's not, the gun is not spinning like it was before. It doesn't have the movement. And this is what's gonna bug you. You're gonna be like, oh, the gun is very stuck. I can't use it. Your right arm should be locked against the side of your body, okay? Your elbow should be smashed against the side of your body for stabilization. And the only moving you should do, if you wanna switch targets, let's say we wanna aim at something over here or aim at something over here, we turn our whole body or just pivot our front arm. That's it. This back arm should not be doing any turning at all. So if you have a habit of doing that, it's time to break it. And the reason why it's so important is because with the virtual stock, it's going to steady and lock that right arm a lot more for you and give you a ton of stability. So I'm just gonna go ahead and aim at the center of this target here. And you can see we do have some shake, right? But we can see how stable that is, right? I'm gonna snap over to the corner of the whiteboard. I'm gonna snap back. And then I'm gonna show you what that looks like with virtual gun stock off, okay? Same thing. I'm trying to stay as steady as I can. Look at how much more shake there is. Swap over. Look how much more shaky the aim is. And I'm holding as steady as I do when I have virtual stock on. Once again, we change virtual stock on. and we see the difference in stability. Which is going to help you pull those medium to long range shots off with much more precision. It is incredibly important, use it, chat. It's going to feel weird at first, but once you understand that you just need to lock your right arm against your body, your right arm should be flat, the elbow against the right side of your body, and you just aim with your whole body, or the front end stick, if you need to just make slight movements, just the front hand. Uh, your aim alone with just that one thing will drastically improve, okay? So do that. It is incredibly important. I am always free handing. I do not use a gun stock. So that is the first biggest tip I can give you, all right? Now, here's another thing I wanna explain. But take your favorite gun, and we're gonna do some aiming practice, okay? I'll show you where you can do this. There's lots of places you can do it. You just need to find targets. I'm gonna show you what I do because I don't like loading into the training zone. But what I like to do is I take this whiteboard, I sit at the back of this wall, and 
you just snap aim to each corner. Put your gun at rest, ADS. How quickly can you lock on to each corner? Okay? It might seem simple. It might seem like it's not doing much. But I promise you, when you have your eyes set on a target, that could be a player running by, how quickly you can snap on to whatever you're intending helps a ton, okay? So you just sit here, you snap to corners, put your gun at rest, snap again, and you do this over and over. Now, um, if you do this before each raid, even if it's just like a minute, you do it for a minute before each raid, your aim will drastically uh, improve. Now, you can instead, if you want something something different to aim at, you can come in here, but you are limited to the guns that are available to you. So you can come in here, end of the training area, and you can snap aim. How quick can we... How quick can we just snap onto a target? And you could just do this over and over again. Put your gun at rest, pick the next target, and just try over and over. And each time, you're going to get better and better at it. If you miss, don't worry. It's all about practice. Just try it again. Okay? So practice your ADS that way. And then, you're gonna to wanna to practice your point fire. Now, point firing is where we're not ADSing. And point firing is terribly important for close quarter combat and quick reactionary combat, okay? Let's say you run around a corner and there's instantly a guy in front of you. It's going to take time to line up the uh, ADS, your sights, on the target and then start firing. And that extra bit of time it takes for you to line up your target is enough time for you to get killed if the other guy is shooting back fast enough and accurate enough. So instead, we rely on point firing for close range combat. And we can do this same kind of practice. You can just sit here and point fire and shoot. Or more importantly, like uh, I'm gonna pick that top left target. We try and point fire at the target and then you don't move your hands or guns and you check your ADS. So I'm just slightly below it. And then you can adjust. Check it, that's good. Point to the top one, check it, that's dead on. Point fire, check it, a little low there. Let's adjust, point fire, check it. That's on target, but it's low. Bottom right, point fire, check. That's a very low, so we need to adjust. Point fire, check. Just a little bit low, but on target. Point fire, check. Okay? So you're gonna do the same practice. You can do that um, on the whiteboard as well. If you want to actually shoot targets, you can come here. We point fire, 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 point fire. So I'm not ADSing. I'm literally just point firing. And my point fire, just from the amount of practice I've put in, is very, very good. It's a reason you see me like using guns like the PPSH, uh, like the Golden SKS, because the iron sights are super rough and they're designed for close quarter combat. So if you become good at point firing those guns, you can quickly snap and I miss every shot. These ones are a lot smaller. These targets are very small. These are basically headshot practice, these ones here. So it's a lot harder. Remember, you're gonna have a whole body to point fire against, so it makes it a lot easier. But if you really wanna hone your point fire, that's all point fire, no ADSing. Now, here's the thing. Each gun has different grip points, okay? So point firing and where your actual forehand is, that's the hand that's furthest forward on the gun, they're different. So you have to position your hand differently, maybe further up, maybe further left, maybe further down, to actually point fire and hit your target. Each gun is a little bit different, and I'll show you a little bit of that. But you'll feel it when you shoot different guns and you go to practice point firing. So let's say, 
because I like using angled foregrips a lot. So the grip point is actually further left on the gun, which means I need to be, in comparison to holding directly under the barrel, my aim needs to be... You can even just see it when I grab it. So look, I'm going to point straight forward. If I was... If I had a grip directly under the barrel, I would line up the gun like this. But as soon as I grab this, you see how it pulls bottom right? So I have to adjust for that. And that's a very good example of different grip points having different point fire uh, positions. So practicing with a gun that you like and use often is really important because each individual gun is going to handle a little bit differently when you aim. So stick to a single gun, practice it a ton, and all of a sudden, just like I'm, uh, maybe I'm tooting my horn a little bit too much here, I'm a god at the golden SKS and the uh, PPSH and anything with an angled foregrip because that's where I've put most of my practice in aiming. So I can quickly, because I've used it for so long, understand the slight adjustment of an angled foregrip and can point fire really, really well with it. So I'm just snapping to those corners. I'm checking the sight to see if I'm actually on my target. And we can see that even with quick snaps, I'm like pretty much dead on on each corner. So we can quickly point fire, bomb, hit that corner. Boom, hit that corner. Boom, hit that corner. Boom, hit that corner. So, once again, I want to drive home the point. ADSing is for medium to long range, or if you're already ADSing and peeking a corner, okay? It's when you're not surprised and need to quickly react. That's when the ADS practice comes in, okay? Point firing is for very close combat, close quarter combat, and reactionary combat. Boom, I round this corner, there's instantly a guy there and I need to start shooting him. So if I round the corner and I need to shoot the top left, let's say the enemy's head is the top left of the whiteboard, I peek, oh my god, he's there. Light that top left corner up with, with point firing, okay? Whereas instead, if I were to come out and try an ADS on it and then start shooting it, we lose like a half a second to a second trying to ADS on the target. All right, so we peek, point fire, we get the kill. So that quick reaction time and using point fire when you're in those close quarter combats will make a massive difference on your survival and your aim. So practice with these uh, little training techniques before each raid. Do your, eight, your point fire practice. Do your ADS practice. Snap before each raid. Even if it's just 30 seconds to a minute, if you do it before each raid, that continuous practice will build into muscle memory and your aim will be insane. It's terribly, terribly important. That's, that's really it, chat. That's all you have to do. So once again, just a quick breakdown. Turn virtual stock on. Get used to it. It's going to feel weird at first, but it will feel like home when you lock that right elbow. It's so, so much better. Two, stick and practice with a gun that you like to use often because each gun behaves differently where you have to have your hand to aim and hit your target. Do your ADS and point fire practice with the gun of your choice on the whiteboard if you don't wanna to go to the training area or head to the training area, but remember you're stuck with the guns that you have there. You can also come into the range here if you'd rather use this, because you can bring whatever Master gun you Jet want to it. Do you have any tips about optic placement on the barrel slash tips for adjusting your aim to compensate for distance? So I always, as a rule of thumb, because I like the sights to be close to my eye, pull the sight all the way back, as far back as it can go, so that I have a really large sight picture. The further out the sight is, the smaller and harder it is to find that reticle and have good aim. The reticle will take up a lot more space. So slide it all the way back, okay? And you'll get the fullest sight picture. That's what you want. Chad, that's it. That's all you have to do.
And if you practice that just 30 seconds to a minute before each raid, I'm telling you, in a couple days time, your aim will drastically, drastically improve. I promise you. And that's all you have to do. Now, the last thing is when you actually take this into raid is just take every gunfight, okay? If, if your goal is to practice your aim, once you warm up here, just go into missile silo or island. If you're wanting to practice close quarter combat, we go to missile silo. If you wanna do more medium to long range combat practice, you go to island and just chase gunshots, kill every Fenix you see because each of it Every kill and every fight you take, even if you die, is practice and will make you better. That's it, chat. Why are you guys talking about stairs? Chat, why are you guys talking about stairs? What are you doing? I'll do a trader level guide later. I have a few other guides written down that I wanna go over with you guys. Uh, most important traders, how to level them, how to make money quickly, and then raid tactics that will keep you alive. That'll go into like how to take fights, um, what to do at the start of each raid, um, and all sorts of other things. But those are for another day. Today, we were just focusing on how to get better at aim because that is the core thing. If you can just get good at one thing, um, it will increase your survival rate a ton uh, for winning fights in Ghost of the War. It's insane. They're asking techniques for clearing ascending stairs. What do you mean? Just, just aim and go up. I don't know. <laughs> Usually you don't want to push somebody uh, upstairs. Your 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 chances of survival kind of go down a bit, especially if they're in a room. Pushing someone always, and we'll go over that more later. But pushing somebody, especially if they're locked down in a room, uh, you always have a huge disadvantage. So you have to use different tactics instead. If I have nades, let's say there's a guy right here in the corner, and he's watching this angle. He's waiting for me to come through the door. He knows I'm outside. He's got his aim locked on as soon as I walk in. Whereas I, if I breach this room, I'm gonna have to guess where he is and then hopefully quickly lock onto him and shoot him before he does me. But he's got an advantage. On paper, if we're both the same exact skill, the guy who's camping wins the fight. He just has better odds there. Um, I have to do a lot of extra stuff that takes time uh, that will make me lose this fight. But instead, if I have nades on me, we just bounce a nade here, right off the wall, throw it in there. We can smoke our entry. We throw a smoke grenade in. Uh, we wait for the smoke to really fill up the air and we slowly sneak in, okay? So he doesn't hear us. We have smoke covering us. Maybe we move around this side and he's not gonna expect because he's probably still locked on the door, us peeking out from here and we can get the kill. Killing campers is a lot different and a lot harder. Uh, but if you have utility on you, you can easily kill campers, easily. You can bounce a grenade consistently if you practice it. You want me to show you? So I personally don't have a terrible amount of practice with nades, but I'll show you regardless. Let's say you have some of these. Make sure they're not impact grenades because you'll kill yourself. He's in that corner I just pointed out. I'm just gonna take this, give it a little chuck. That grenade's right there. If he's camping in that corner, he's dead from that nade. Once again, take it. We just give it a little shove right in that corner. Boom, bounce it off the corner. That one's a little farther back. He might survive it, but I've got extra nades. I'll throw a few more in there until they I hear the death sound. The game and half the time timed actors impact. Yeah, I know. It's rough, but you can still give it a try. There's another bounce right on the inside of the door. And you can sit here and practice this stuff too. But yeah, utility will help you kill campers. All right, chat, let's go do some raids, shall we? Thank you all for watching. If you feel the video deserves it, give it a like, consider subscribing. It means a lot for my small channel. Also, I do a lot of live streaming on twitch.tv. The link will be in the description below. That's all for today. Expect more Ghost of Tabor content. And until then, I'll see you in the field.